Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. The Democrats are ruined after Trump aims his secret weapon right at them. Despite all the commotion and bad press President Trump is getting now, surrounding the fake news about his statements about the violence in Charlottesville, va, he continues to kick the liberals' collective butts. The DNC is floundering and dying, unable to fundraise enough to support their candidates in the upcoming midterm elections. But still, vote. Compare that to what Trump has done, leading the charge to raise $75 million in the first six months of 2017. That's right, patriots. The DNC, despite all the crazy liberal protesters gathering against Trump, has only managed to raise $38.2 million. Yay, it's a lot, but it's just a tad over half of what Trump has helped raise for the Republicans. One Democratic donor even acknowledged, we really should be kicking their asses. And it shouldn't even be close, considering all hell is breaking loose on their side. Ain't that the truth? I think it's largely because the Democrats have no leader. Instead of rallying around a strong leader who can energize their party, they continue their failed fight of hate and denigration of Trump. It's one reason why Hillary failed. Because instead of energizing her party around her, she tried to energize America against him. And it failed. And it continues to fail. If you think Trump will lead us to victory again in 2918, comment we will win in 2018 and share, telling all your friends to hashtag vote 2018. H. T. The Hill Stop the attacks the media was just caught in a massive bias scandal over Trump's speech. This is sick. President Trump has been hammered nonstop for his comments on Tuesday condemning both white supremacists and alt-left groups at the Charlottesville rally, reaffirming his belief that both sides were to blame for the violent clashes that resulted in the death of one woman, the president inflamed critics on the left and even some Republicans. One line from his talk particularly incensed critics OK, what about the alt-left that came charging at us, this would mean that President Trump is in some way identifying with white nationalist protesters. Politico's journalist Annie Carney pointed it out on Twitter, just notice the use of us in this transcript. From there it was noted by journalists from the New York Times, the Washington Post, and other media outlets. Except dot the transcript containing that dialogue was wrong. President Trump did not say us, he most likely said him. After reviewing the transcript and the original video, Politico issued an update saying. OK, what about the alt-left that came charging at, indiscernible, dash excuse me, what about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? But the damage is done. And just one example, take a look at Maggie Haberman's tweet of Trump using us versus her retraction tweet. The us tweet has 1,565 retweets and 2,844 likes, and the retraction has 406 retweets and 728 likes. It definitely does not sound like charging at us. The media just got caught whether they did it on purpose would be hard to determine. But this small typo has fueled the flames of criticisms against the president, and it seems unlikely that many of his critics will see the error corrected. H.T. Fox News OMG! Ben Carson's home was just vandalized by the violent left, but his powerful response put them to shame. The liberal media wants to ignore the extreme hate and violence coming from the left, but it's growing stronger and they are claiming new victims every single day. The latest victim is our own Secretary of Urban Development, Ben Carson. Ben Carson's home was vandalized Wednesday with hateful rhetoric about President Trump. More recently our home in Virginia along with that of a neighbor was vandalized by people who also wrote hateful rhetoric about President Trump explained Dr. Carson in a Facebook post. 
We were out of town, but other kind, embarrassed neighbors cleaned up most of the mess before we returned. The vandalism was a response to what happened in Charlottesville on Saturday. Apparently, the alt-left feels the need to attack anyone who supports President Trump. Ben Carson didn't lash out and name call like so many liberals have done this week. Instead, he shared his own story. Several years ago we bought a farm in rural Maryland. One of the neighbors immediately put up a Confederate flag. A friend of ours who is an African-American three-star general was coming to visit and immediately turned around concluding that he was in the wrong place. Interestingly, all the other neighbors immediately put up American flags shaming the other neighbor who took down the Confederate flag, he wrote. In both instances, less than kind behavior was met by people taking the high road, noted Carson. We could all learn from these examples. Ben Carson's message is going viral and for good reason. We all need to unite now more than ever. As President Trump said, we are all Americans first. After McMaster just sided with Obama instead of Trump on extremism see what happens next. H.R. McMaster is President Trump's national security advisor. As such, he is expected to help the president keep our great nation secure. Of course, security against Islamic terrorism is of paramount importance. Trump has no fear of using the phrase radical Islamic terrorism. In fact, he's used that term a lot. He also called out former President Obama for refusing to use that term. Well, a top terrorism expert says that McMaster in endangering our national security by refusing to recognize radical Islamic terrorism for what it really is, and call it by name. Stephen Emerson, executive director of the Investigative Project on Terrorism, said that about McMaster, after watching a speech McMaster gave in 2014 on the Middle East. In that speech, McMaster claimed that Islamic terrorist organizations are really un-Islamic and are really irreligious organizations who cloak themselves in the false legitimacy of Islam. He tried to separate the terrorists from their espoused religion, Islam. This is quite opposite of what Trump has said, emphasizing that terrorism is done by radicals of the Islamic faith. What do you think Trump needs to do with McMaster? Is this enough to let him go? Please comment your thoughts and then share to gather comments so this gets all the way back to Trump. H. T. Breitbart New York Times just said American citizens commit more crimes than illegals. Liberal newspaper The New York Times will bend over backwards to slander good hard-working American citizens if it means making people who are in our country illegally look good. In one of the most absurd and patently false statements yet given by liberals during the current immigration debate, an article in the paper claimed that people here legally commit fewer crimes than U.S. citizens. The article began, about one in five inmates in federal prison are foreign-born, and more than 90 percent of those are in the United States illegally according to a report released on Thursday by the Trump administration, which has sought to highlight the dangers it says unauthorized immigrants pose to public safety. It then went on to say, incredibly, administration officials have repeatedly emphasized what it says are links between unauthorized immigrants and crime, even opening an office to advocate for the victims of crimes committed by immigrants. But a large body of research has suggested that immigrants are no more likely, and often less likely, to commit serious crimes than native-born Americans. It then quoted a liberal activist named Tom Javits, who said about Trump's latest immigration report, the report proves one thing only, the administration will take any opportunity possible to twist facts to demonize immigrants. The vast majority of immigrants in federal prison are there for crimes that only immigrants can be charged with, illegal entry and illegal entry after removal. When you cook the books you shouldn't pretend to be surprised by the results. Do you think the New York Times needs to start helping regular Americans and not illegal immigrants? C. 
CNN host just admitted Trump could become the most consequential president of the modern era. Liberal news network CNN notoriously falls all over itself supporting Democratic politicians and points of view and attacking and even outright slandering Republican politicians and policies. This has proved to be especially true during the Trump era where they, like many moderate Republicans as well, cannot seem to accept the fact that American voters chose an outsider who is not part of the established Washington, D.C. political class to be our president. It came as a huge surprise, then, when CNN host Michael Smirconish actually dared to tell the truth for once and admit to his viewers how incredibly important Donald Trump's presidency has been and will continue to be, around the world. Stated Smirconish on his program, if the pace of change continues for the duration of Trump's presidency, however long that might be, I think he could become the most consequential president in the modern era. Consequential meaning most important and significant, having the biggest overall impact. Michael then named all of the president's many achievements during his short time in office, calling out Time magazine for making a mistake by not naming Trump as its person of the year for this past year. He went on and said that the president absolutely impacted more American lives than any other public figure. Are you glad this CNN host said this?